Hello everyone, welcome to uh, lesson two of our creating our own point and click adventure tutorial series. Uh, in this video, I'm going to look at um, making a pop-up info screen with you uh, where we're going to just give some, some basic information about the game that's going to pop up on top of the first screen when you enter the first room just so people understand what they're doing. Now, it might give a little bit of context for the game, it might give a little bit of information. I want this to be quite intuitive. I don't think a point and click is particularly difficult to work out what's going on. Um, so what we're talking about here is that just some information will pop up on the screen. It will sort of sell the idea of the game whilst also giving a clue as to, not really a clue, but a hint as to what the user is expected to do. By um, sort of just the rule of, of gaming anyway, we, we would experiment and click around and try and work out what we're doing anyway, even if no instructions were there. It should be fairly obvious, but nevertheless, I want to set the scene and, and tell a little bit of information. So we're not going to do this on the title screen. This, this is going to pop up on top of our regular game. Now, the first thing we want to do is come into Inkscape. I'm going to create most of my assets in Inkscape now, because obviously, like we know, they're vector graphics, so they're scalable. I'm not looking to make anything photorealistic, so I'm quite happy to make it in Inkscape. My canvas size is going to be 1024 576. Now, the reason for this is when we exported out our visuals before, you'll notice when we come out of GIMP, I was working at HD 1920 1080. But when I exported out my PNG files, the size they exported out was 1024 by 576. So this was the final scene that we ended up with, with everything compiled together from our lesson one. But in lesson two, um, I'm going to stick with these sizes. So just first thing you want to do is clarify that's the size you're working at, 1024.576, you can see. Um, so I'm going to accept that size. And this is my canvas for today. So this would represent the whole screen. So if I were to bring that image in, we just looked at the background, that's how it would look. Now I could potentially put it on a layer so we could see how it look over the top. Uh, it's up to you whether you do that or not. I'm not particularly worried if we do have it in there, but let's quickly drag. I should have just placed it. If we just drag it in, let's have a look um, how it looks. Okay, so let's just import our image from Ceno one uh, full background. Okay, I'm going to have to scale it. I'm not really sure why it's not coming into size, being that I made it at the right size, but we'll see. Okay. Well, that's interesting because I know for a fact that image should be 1024.576. So I've identified an issue already. 1024.576. I know that's the size of that image that's coming in. So let's just double check my document properties. 1024. I know I'm working in pixels for units. 1024.576. Interesting that it isn't um, doing it. So what I've done there is resize my page to drawing or selection just for now to make sure that we're working the right size. So height, width. Um, I could try and unlock that. Let's just make sure. So 1024 was our width pixel, so PX. Okay, and then those are, rel oh, those are relative anyway. So let's just undo that. Let's go back. That's fine. I'm just going to come back to here. So hopefully yours is coming at the correct size anyway, and you wouldn't have had this problem to start with. But just make sure. So file document properties, make sure you're working at the correct size. Uh, and if I also then import my image, which I know you don't necessarily have to, but this is just to show how it's going to look in the game. Let's um, drop that in there. I mean, this isn't actually going to become part of it. Uh, this is just for reference for the background. Um, we'll drag that down there. Okay, excellent. So that's just going to pose as my background layer. So let's call this uh, sign that layer. And I can always um, call this layer background. So that's just my background reference. Make sure I'm working on my sign layer. And the first thing I'm going to do is, is drop a square shape in. Now I've got rounded corner square on at the moment. It's up to you whether you wish to use that or not. Let's have a look. So at the moment my square has no fill and no colour. It's got a very thin stroke you can see in the bottom corner. But 
I will change that in a minute. So realistically, my pop-up probably wants to come here. Now I can orientate this obviously by the menu at the top if I wish to. So this will be going from uh, the corner points. Uh, so working out exactly where that was on the screen would we'll take a bit of a maths equation to work out how big this box was. But I want to make sure this is pretty much square. So let's call this 100. Um, and I can unlock that so that it doesn't proportionally change it. There we go. So I'm working with a square 100 to 100. If I wanted it to stay in the same ratio, I would click that and it would automatically update for me. But there you go. That that sort of square there will do. I might be able to expand it a little bit. It's totally up to you. In fact, let's just play around quickly, see what that looks like. 125 by 125. Okay quite happy with that sort of shape there yeah um, and what I can do then is just play around to have a quick look at some fill colors so what I'm probably going to do is choose a, a dark blue so this is just going to pose as, as the background for my for my shape so let's let's choose something like that okay excellent quite happy with that then we've got all our options here if we did wish to have some. So shadow, drop shadow, something I quite like because it makes it feel a bit more three-dimensional like it's popping out the screen. So let's, whoops, I don't want a live preview. I mean, I do want a live preview, but I don't want it to be 200. I think that's a bit nuts. So let's change this down to maybe five. Let's see around there what that's looking like. Possibly still a bit big, so let's change that to one. Let's change these. And let's just turn it off so we can see. Okay, it's quite nice. You can see on the edges, especially if you look at the rounded corners. If you turn those on and off, you can see it feels a bit more three dimensional there. And if you do want to sort of minimalize the effect of it, you can reduce down the X and the Y how far out it's. Uh, it's going okay I really do find these fiddly in Inkscape so let's just turn that on and off that's quite nice I just want a nice close uh, drop shadow okay so that box feels three-dimensional like it's sitting on top okay now I've got this screen I could potentially have uh, a stroke color to it so in my stroke style at the moment in theory, I have still got stroke on, but it's tiny. So if I change that right up, you'll see. Oh, yeah, there was a stroke on all along. So let's just change that. Um, for the interesting clean edges, I might keep it on for now and then get rid of it toward the end uh, just so we can see what's going on. We can make a choice towards the end. OK, so I changed that down to 0.5. But what I'm going to do is draw a little shape inside the box. Then I'm going to put some text in that I've predefined. I might um, make a little sort of logo bit. And, and then in the next tutorial, we're going to look at making a HUD. So we're going to have information about the game here and here and here. So this will start to feel a lot more like sort of a, a game screen. And then we could go as far as making this look like, you know, it was a security camera footage or something like that. That might be quite fun. Um, but we'll work that out as we go along. So I'm going to come over here to my what I would call the pen tool if I was working in Illustrator, but one of my favorite tools. Um, let's for now, so I'm gonna wanna choose like an orange color really to complement my blue. Um, and what I'm going to do, sort of come across here, I'm just gonna create a shape inside. So this is gonna be like the background, but I'm gonna create a shape a little bit like this that's gonna fit in with the, um, the aesthetic of the, the museum sort of look. Um, that I think will be interesting and we're going to come down to about probably about there actually let's do something like that that'll look cool uh, let's come in a bit so we might come to the same roughish place as there okay let's bring that into about there and that to there okay brilliant Right, so let's make sure I'm working on the right layer. So that was my sign. 
let's just check. I did have a suspicion that had gone onto the wrong layer, so I'm just going to call this um, sign detail. Now that will make a new layer. That layer I want to move on top, but that doesn't mean that um, this object's actually applied to it. So I need to right click on it, move to layer, because in Illustrator it would be you could just move them around um, from layer to layer. It'd be quite nice and easy. That it isn't that easy, unfortunately, in Inkscape. What from my ex limited experience that I've had using the package so far. Um, and that's what we've got. Okay, so I'm going to change for now that I might get rid of the stroke color. Um, and let's um, just have a quick look at that orange. Something like that, a bit darker is fine. Let's turn on the sign below. Okay, so this is going to pose us like um, signage. Uh, this is just going to be a pop up window, it's going to pop up now. Um, I may, I may change that background. Not sure about any of these really. I, I, do, I just don't want it to be distracting. Um, there you go. That's a bit nicer already. If I've got a slight transparency to it, because nothing's going to go on here. I'm not going to put any information on that blue background. Everything's going to be on this sign, so it's going to sort of fit in with uh, the aesthetic of the scene. Now, if you're not happy with the sign that you've drawn, don't forget you can always click on it. Uh, you've got a choice. Obviously, you've got these options. If I click it once, I can move it. If I click it twice, I can rotate it. If I come uh, up here to edit path by nodes, I can select the nodes. Let's just demonstrate quickly. And then I can, if I wish, I'm using the arrow tool, but I could move that in, make that less sharp um, and, and change that around uh, if I wanted to. I quite like that. I'm still not sure about the uh, the stroke color to the background. It's all um, up to you. But let's, let's go with something like that for now. OK, so maybe if I move it over a fraction as well. Right, this is now going to pose as my, um, the background of my sign. I'm going to put all the text on here. So this is going to look like it's just a sign that's in the museum, uh, but it's a pop-up window. It's very clear this isn't part of the room. Um, I want it to look like, you know, this is a pop-up that they can get rid of. And, and we'll look at methods for doing that in a minute. You can have a look, see if the drop shadow works well on here. Probably does. So let's apply that for now. OK, so th this is where I'm working. You can see the importance of those drop shadows because a flat shape then feels a lot more three dimensional. So what I'm going to do is just write some copy, so some text here about the game. We'll work out fonts and we'll work out uh, sizing and that once I know how much I'm going to write. Then I'm going to create a sort of a little uh, close icon in the corner and I'll explain what we're going to do there. I'll probably put some form of like little uh, arrow or, or logo or shape here just to tie it all together a little bit and then create a little um, logo for the museum um, that you'd sort of see in the corner you'd expect to see. And, and again, it is, it's useful to have reference um, for things like that. So I've got reference images. I've got a few that I really like um, here in this corner here. So these are quite nice museum um, signage. This is quite nice. Uh, and this is this is where I've sort of got my shape from that I really like. So there, there's some some really nice examples. Very good idea to get reference um, for anything you're creating, really. But remember, our game isn't uh, realistic. We're going for this sort of vector based thing. So you don't need anything too extravagant. Um, yeah, so basically, first thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to, um, right, I'm not going to work on sign detail. I'll work on text layer. It's always good habits to get them on different layers. Let's get the text tool up. Let's draw out, I can draw out a text box if I want. Um, I'll probably do uh, a little bit of information here, let's say, and then I'll probably add some more information down here in a minute. So let's give them an idea about what's going on in the story. Now, I can tell you straight away, I know my font isn't going to be size 10. Uh, I can tell you straight away, I know it's not going to be sans serif. So obviously, this is totally up to you which fonts you wish to choose. Um, I know for a fact um, that um, some fonts are going to work better than others. There you go. I don't know why they didn't all load straight away. Uh, Franklin Gothic is quite a nice one. Uh, there's a lot of nice fonts. I like Gil Sans. I always find that quite formal. Um, but we'll see, let's just type some letters, famous last words, let's just type some letters, he says I must have pressed a shortcut, um, so let's, let's do that, okay, that didn't work at all, okay, 
Okay, so let's click sign. Let's click over here. Actually, if I let's just make sure I don't accidentally click on any of those letters by locking them. Let's click, make some text. Right, there you go. Fiddly tool for some reason. Can't actually tell you why it should be that fiddly. Not really sure compared to obviously like Illustrator and anything. I know I keep harping on about those, but this again is the uh, what third time I think I've used Inkscape. So I'm still getting used to uh, the fiddliness. I'm sure people that use it all the time are just used to uh, the quirks and things like that. So let's write some copy. We, we, can, um, we can resize, reshape or whatever we need to afterwards. Um, so let's accept that font. I'm happy with that. There we go. Whoops. Okay, huh. we got a letter down. Right. I'll, I, what I'm going to do is just write it because every time I then click off, it seems to then decide that it wants to um, click on something else for me. Right. So, got our font. We got it ready. It goes against the grain for me. Let's just change the size down and keeps bringing up shortcuts while everything. Right, I'm sure. There you go. You sort of have to activate it. Just press enter, which obviously makes a line down, but there's no rhyme or reason to whether it's going to start writing or not. Right, it's after dark. This is just some copy that I've made for my game. Um, so this is just going to set the scene for the game. So it's after dark and you've been locked in the museum. Let's go with a capital for museum, maybe. Okay. It has become clear that all is not well. Okay, so we've set the scene. We know where we are. We know things have gone wrong. Standard. Okay, so this is like the start of any film. Um, Let's add a bit to that. Mysterious events are taking place. It doesn't actually give a clue necessarily to what those mysterious events are. It could be um, that we've got uh, aliens. It could be that we've got anything really. So let's have a look at that. Um, all right. So happy days. That's fine. So let's copy, paste move this down a little bit now we will have to resize remove and so on which i'll do in a minute but we'll work that out in a bit uh, how that's going to work i just want to get all the text down we'll start to resize it then we'll know what we're doing okay so okay it's after dark uh mysterious events uh taking place which you won't be able to see because that's hidden let's just demonstrate that it is there um so let's uh, change it down a little bit right so yeah there you go there, there, it is in there um i will need to change it around i just said that but we'll work that out in a bit okay so next line let's say um, this is starting to sum up the game so you have um limited time okay because they are going to have limited time i don't want to say you have 10 minutes because they are going to have 10 minutes but we're going to look at doing difficulty settings so someone who's doing it on a harder uh, level will have more than 10 minutes okay so you have limited time. I mean, they'll have less than 10 minutes if they're doing it um, to get out and to wrap. Um, you have limited time to get out. Let's leave that a full stop uh, to do so. You'll need to solve three. We'll probably do that in a couple of minutes. Challenging. Actually, let's go bigger than that. Mind bending might be overselling it a little bit. <laughs> Puzzles in three. Uh, no, actually, if I say in three, that sounds like you might have three puzzles in each room. So uh, let's say navigating three challenging rooms. Okay. So. That's given them a clue. This is what to expect from the game. Obviously, we've got to change the size down in a minute because we're missing some. I prefer it around this size, but I'm still not convinced by font and things like that yet. Um, let's just change that. Okay, so if the time, so this is the consequence part. So if the time runs out, 
You are trapped forever. A bit sinister. Probably just wait for the caretaker to open the next day, but it's got to be some consequence in losing. You've got to make them feel that they're going to achieve something in this attraction. I don't want to say museum again. So if the time runs out, you are trapped forever. If the time runs out, then you are trapped forever. Let's go with that. Just another ask the cat. Hmm, interesting. Artifact. Just another artifact in the attraction. I'll go with that. I'm not saying it's perfect, but that's going to be the story of this whole game. Um, and then let's just finish the last bit so they know they're very clear on what they're doing. We're sort of um, recovering the points. It become unravel your quests, which means they're going to have to work out what they're having to do on each screen. They're not going to be told. So like the puzzles that are on the wall here, they're going to have to. So unravel, um, unravel your quests um, and solve the puzzles in this point and click which tells them they're pointing and clicking uh, adventure um, so that you can and then we're going to tie into the um, title of the game which we're going to end at the bottom of it like they do on movie posters and things. We'll just tie it in with a, all in caps, I'm sure it'll be, escape the museum. Excellent. Right, now we're gonna have a look at font, layout, all those things, size. I just wanted to get down the text. Um, yours, obviously, whatever your game, what's happening in there, the events and the story, we can work it out you can work out accordingly. I just want sort of a formal font that sort of says classy museum whilst also being readable and uh, looking half decent, okay? So let's have a look at some fonts. So like I said before, uh, Gil Sands is one of the fonts I prefer. Um, let's just take a look. So if I highlight all my text, Sorry, if I click in the box and highlight all my text, let's just see. I mean, sans serif doesn't look too bad. It's quite nice, clean, round edges. I quite like it. This one's one of my favourites. I mean, I know it's not the coolest having a favourite font, but uh, when you use them enough, you get used to them. Let's have a look at something like that. That might work. I mean, it's not the clearest for people, so I might uh, upscale that in a second. Um, so, actually, I wonder if this will work. So, in Illustrator, you're able to click on a text box, you're able to paint dropper, click on the text. No, it just chooses the color. Uh, so, you could click on the text and tell it that you wanted the text to match this font size and um, color, but we don't seem to have that luxury. Um, Right, let's highlight all of the text because I noticed it didn't get the last room. Let's skip to G, Gil Sands, MT. Obviously, you can choose whichever one you like that you think works for yours. I'm already thinking I might upscale mine a little bit. Um, but the joy of the way I'm going to design it is basically the audience will be able to, um, if I warp it, doesn't seem to. The audience will be able to uh, close the window when they've read everything. It's not going to scroll and then be on a timer. Um, so they'll get as much time to read this as they need. I think that's the best way to do it uh, because we all read at different speeds. Uh, right, so let's go to Gil Sands and T. <clears throat> uh, 12 does actually look a bit of a nicer size actually so I might leave that at 12 so it saves me then having to go back um, and correct so let's come into here okay repetition hey right kill sounds like T nice same for this Bosch Bosch quite sluggish to reply when I click on the drop down there you go 
doesn't seem to like doing anything on the first occasion. Um, there we go. So let's just change the size of that font to 12. Same applies here to 12. Uh, and now we, we can move the box around a little bit if we want. So I want my text to start about here. Uh, we're going to follow the natural curve a little bit, but uh, just sort of like we would uh, in a sign in the museum. All right, you might get a big text block, but um, like a, you'd get a solid uh, sort of square of text, but I just want to make it look a bit more in keeping. Um, so what I might now do is just quickly, oh yeah, it's locked. So sign. Same detail, yeah, there it is. Let's unlock that for a sec. Uh, let's come in here, change these angles a fraction. That's all right, isn't it? Let's come out there a bit. Cool. Okay. Let's um, also just looking at it. Obviously, it's personal preference. Escape the museum. There we go. That's all right. I mean, if you want to set things like guides up, we spoke about guides before, but you can drag them out from the side, line them up, make sure the text is lining up nicely, drag them back off if you don't need them. Um, let's lock that layer again. Uh, you shouldn't leave what they call an orphan, so you shouldn't really leave one word on its own on a line below. So let's just press enter. So that moves that down onto that line. That line feels a bit better now. Done the same here. I've left rooms on its own, so I need to correct these sentences. Um, seems I'm going to have to do that by clicking on them. Right, so I'm going to highlight the word three. So, however many rooms you've added or whatever, I would recommend. Actually, let's bold italic it. Why not? Bold italic. Uh, you can also justify lines, uh, which actually will space it out so that they, you're about to see because there's only two words in that, but it will space it out so it fits the whole of the text box that you've created. Uh, if I then, but the only problem is I'm now scaling the text box, which I don't want to do. Um, I guess up here somewhere I'm able to, I think that does that. Yeah, perfect. Okay, that actually works quite nicely, doesn't it? Um, there you go. So I've worked out how to scale my text box. Three changing rooms. That looks a bit better. There you go. So I've got the three above each other. There. I like that. Uh, this one's okay. Not perfect. I'm leaving a bit of a gap here because I want to do a little bit of a logo here. And then I'm just going to uh, make a little bit of a symbol in the bottom corner. So what I'm going to do for the symbol first is unlock this layer. Let's copy, paste. Uh, I'm going to scale it down. So let's hold um, control while I scale it down. That's nice. That'll do. Um, in that bottom corner there. That's it. Control paste. Let's make another one. That's cool. Uh, let's bring it out a bit. Okay. Just use that. Okay, and what I might do for those two, obviously, is it's just to, to tighten a little bit, just a design choice. Again, you don't have to do it. I'm just trying to make this look plausible, like it would be a, a design, a sign design in a museum. Uh, let's change this down to 80. Yeah, that's fine. I need to do an X button, and I need to do a little uh, sort of logo thing in the top corner, just uh, as if it was an actual sign from the museum. So I could use a, um, like I've done here, like a symbol or something like that. But what I will probably do, actually, let's just try the font. I didn't play around with the font color either. Does that read a bit better? It probably does. Uh, yeah, I think I like that. Let's just take a look at it. Um, yeah, it probably reads quite nicely. Uh, still pretty clear. Not exactly happy with the way this line is. Mutated, but 
Oh, oops, let's bring that up. So I know being a tutorial, you don't necessarily want to watch me fiddle around with moving text and stuff like that, but I just find it. Um, I like to get things right the first time. There we go. So let's now put our oh, right. So we've got all our text looking all right. Let's come to this tool here, our pen tool again. And what I'm going to do, uh, hold control, middle mouse button. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see I didn't lose any quality, no pixelation, apart from my background, which was saved as a picture, um, which obviously pixelated. But I'm not worried about that at this stage because I'm not going to save the picture as part of it. And what I'm going to do for this part now is, is create a little logo. Uh, so I'm going to um, make a new layer. Let's call it logo because I might use it again in other bits, the title page, I don't really know. Uh, and this isn't necessarily logo design, but it's just um, I'm on the wrong tool. Definitely didn't mean that tool. I meant the pen tool. Okay, so let's go. So I'll come back and do the middle of the E. So I'm just going to do like a um, escape the museum. Let's come back to there. Uh, e T and then let's make this like an M. It looks alright. It's there for better to do. Okay, that that line needs to come in a bit. So, oh, I seem to have pressed off before I accepted it. Fantastic. Okay, one more time. Let me let's reduce the size down in a minute. So, and then I want that to overhang a bit. So it's a bit of a T. Obviously, I know this is going to be too big, but I'll make sure I get the scale right to start with. There we go, and then about there. I'll do nicely. Apparently, I didn't accept it again. I don't know what's happening there. So, I'm pressing escape, which is the tool that I'd press in Illustrator to come out of the tool. I know you hear me keep talking about that. Um, and it would accept the pen tool had, had worked, whereas that didn't seem to be the case with the pen tool here. So, I will try not to be in the habit of pressing it on this third go. Right, so let's press enter. There you go. So enter worked. Um, brilliant. Um, let's accept that. Move that point down a fraction. And that point. Zoom in a little bit. So that's okay. That's not what I wanted. Right, bear with. This is just me being um, fiddly. Whoops, I did have it right. There you go, that'll do. Right, so we've got our E. That part shouldn't come out as much either. Right, so we can choose our stroke paint. So I would like. Uh, let's swap those over. That is fine. I'm going to take off my fill color. I don't want a fill color. Stroke color works okay. Stroke style. We can always round off the edges if we want. Um, we can change the joins. You can also change it to markers at the end of it. I mean, we definitely don't want that. Let's clarify that. But you could change it, or I could make the line dashed, like so. I mean, it looks horrible. I want a solid line, but we can change the thickness and everything. Let's just try some like. Th Let's just try something like 0.375. Makes it a bit sturdier. So this would just. I'm just trying to go for like a not professional, but you know, like a, a logo that makes it feel a bit more plausible. Like this is actually a sign from a museum. Um, so ETM escape the museum. Hopefully we got that. Let's see, let's see if that works. Yeah, nice rounded edges. Looks a bit smoother. So it's going to go there. And what I'm going to want in this top corner here. So I might keep them with the color scheme. 
can go with a circle. So I hold control if I want a perfect circle, like so. Let's move that about there. Now it's our choice now whether we choose to fill the inside of it or not. I probably, if I'm honest, I probably will. So let's choose that. Yep, great. Let's keep the stroke color. Uh, we can see what we want to do for the stroke color, but I might make it black. Sort of works. Let's try it in white. That probably works a bit better. Uh, obviously, the opacity is set down. You you can step it up so it's solid, or you can have it down so it's opaque, um, like the background. I'm happy with solid there. Uh, and then I just want to put a big X across it. So totally down to you uh, and your personal preference how you want to do that uh, we could draw it with a pen we could draw it with this calligraphy brush if you really want um, there's my uh, sort of attempt um, at an X let's rotate that a bit so I click on it twice take that one click on it twice take that again Okay, let's move that out of the way for a sec. Click on it twice. Yeah, that's better. Okay, move that back in. Move it back up a bit. Okay, so it's just uh, perfecting it. So spend a little bit of time with it rather than sort of, well, a little bit like I'm doing, just boshing it in. Okay, so that's all right. Got a little logo, got some information. Feels sort of sterile and formal like, um, like a, a museum sort of... Um, information board would obviously you can play around with your own settings i'm not expecting to see the same things from you uh try whatever you like in here and that looks a bit better i'm thinking sort of science museum or something there uh i like the fact this hangs over a little bit the top makes it feel like it's wrapped around a little bit the drop shadow really helps obviously uh but nothing is set in stone so that you can move everything around unlock those layers uh, make some design choices of your own. Now, obviously, at the moment, the X button doesn't work. It's not a button. I'm just trying to shape. But what we're going to do when we take this into the computer program is draw a blank uh, square or circle over the top of this uh, and just say when that blank button is pressed, the uh, this action will happen. So the window will close. Uh, so it will load the video. Now, obviously, that's, that's, that's not really a problem at this stage, but um, that just that's just me explaining how that's going to work at a later date so you don't have to worry about how we're going to program it now we've got a couple of choices um, that we can do with this uh, as it stands at the moment now we've got obviously everything's layered which is quite useful i'll just explain it actually two seconds before we get into it so sign detail so what what when we load the game could happen is we can either bring this in as a png on its own so let's first show you how to save it as that so that's what we've got obviously we've lost our transparency there because there's nothing it is still 80% transparent, but there's nothing going on in the background. So I've gone to export PNG. I'm going to choose where I want to save that. So I'm going to choose my point and click. Um, still would be for C01. And let's call this pop up instructions. Put a capital there just to make it look neat. Okay, so pop up instructions, hit export happy days then we'll be able to post that over the top of it that's absolutely fine but what might happen if you think about it basically is that we're playing a video in the background um, because that's how we're going to export it now it's it's up to you I'm going to export both because I'm not sure which way I'm going to prefer it yet when it brings up so I might turn my background on and I might have this sort of as the holding screen and then when someone presses close I might say like when this button is hit uh, background video plays so this it will be seamless to the audience because the background uh, all it is is an interactive uh, video that they're, they're clicking potentially or it will be uh, a static image I'm not really sure yet. it depends but if you are planning on doing it as a sort of an interactive video that they'll click I mean mine's more likely to be a static image but if you're doing a static video you'll want to do this you'll want to export and again you can export PNG but with the whole area so with the background and everything so let's just call this um, proper instructions full uh, so that I've got an example. Don't forget to press export. Lots of you are forgetting that when I saw 
you first tackle in the uh, the character task um, so there you go we've got our uh, information screen it takes a little while to read um, yes realistically these gaps should be the same I should have the same sort of distance from the sides and so on if I was really going into this but um, the idea really is that you're learning to use the tools and just getting some information on the screen okay so we're going to make this an active button when we come to programming the game or it's not really programming but you know event driven uh, programming when we use construct but th this was just uh, giving the user some information uh, that's different to the title screen okay that we will create uh, at a later date so that's lesson two lesson three we're going to start making the hud uh, there's not gonna be much to it but we're gonna have sort of information for a timer we're gonna have the level information and then we'll have like a box where the clues are gonna pop up in the bottom corner okay so excellent I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial any questions do reach out to me and ask them okay thanks very much bye